Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Julie Hill. I'm the Horticulture Outreach Specialist for Rock and Walworth Counties. And I have along with me here, Margaret Murphy. She is a Horticulture Outreach Specialist serving uh, Dunn, Chippewa, and Eau Claire Counties. So we want to welcome everybody to today's webinar about growing strawberries in containers. Uh, Margaret and I will be your moderators for today. So we just want to tell you to please use the Q&A function to ask your questions. You should be able to find that right at the bottom bottom of your screen if you're on a computer or a laptop. If you're on some sort of mobile device, then tap your screen and then that menu will come up. So again, use the Q&A for questions. We will not be using the chat for any types of questions. And um, we are recording this webinar. The link will be added on our horticulture website uh, where you registered for the webinar. So we will add the link to the recording next week after we have it ready. And it is now my pleasure to introduce our presenter today, Darren Kimbler. He is an agriculture extension educator for University of Wisconsin-Madison's Division of Extension serving Iron County. He provides research-based horticulture and agricultural assistance to the residents of Iron County and does have a focus on commercial maple syrup production. Darren is an avid canoeist and a general outdoor enthusiast. He and his wife own Taiga Farm and Vineyards in Ironwood Township, Michigan, and they raise Icelandic sheep, pastured pigs, produce, and wine grapes. So I'll turn over to you, Darren. Thank you so much. Thank you, Julie and Margaret and, and Jay and Jacob. Uh, let me get my screen up here real quick. And welcome everyone. And I hope everybody can see my screen. Looks good, thanks, Darren. All right. So welcome everybody. So today we are going to be talking about growing strawberries in containers. And so the question is, is why containers? Um, well, not everyone has a, a space in the ground uh, that uh, is good for growing strawberries. And uh, if you live in an apartment or a condo uh, or you have a rental home, you may not have access to uh, a lawn or garden uh, and even if you do own your property, especially in some older neighborhoods or smaller lots, uh, they may be too shaded to, to give yourself good crops of strawberries if you're planting them in your garden. So uh, containers on your deck and on your windows uh, are a great option for those who uh, would like to be able to grow a little bit of their own food and um, don't have the, the space. Also, uh, for those of us who are getting a little older, Strawberries grow, grow really close to the ground and um, harvesting and caring for them requires you to get down low if they're in the ground. And um, my knees uh, tend to protest a little more each year when I'm at, down there. By uh, moving uh, your strawberries into containers, you can set them at levels that, at, at heights that allow you uh, easier access uh, if you're uh, starting to experience some of those mobility issues. And finally, you know, strawberry plants uh, can be very pretty and they can be a component in your, um, your, your ornamentation around your house, your garden, uh, your deck. And uh, they give you that added benefit of being an edible ornamental. So um, these are all reasons why uh, growing uh, strawberries in containers uh, might work for you. A little bit about uh, the strawberry plant and its biology and why it um, works well uh, for container growing. Uh, they tend to be very short lived perennials up to about three years before having to replace even the, uh, the longest lived ones. They're fairly shallow rooted. So that uh, makes for a, a good combination for um, uh, growing in containers. They do reproduce asexually by stolons and runners. Uh, and we can talk, we'll talk a little bit more about the, the pros and cons of that later. And this is where I'm gonna get controversial. <clears throat> the seeds that we uh, uh, typically associate with strawberries are actually the fruits and they're akins, uh, similar to uh, what you would see in a, say, a sunflower uh, fruit, which is also a, you know, called a seed. And that fleshy fruit uh, that we all enjoy, that is actually a vegetable. It's a modified stem. So it uh, would not be considered a fruit by a uh, botanist. Uh, strawberry uh, development is uh, influenced by a lot of environmental factors, but uh, changes in day length uh, affect its flowering and its development. And that's gonna influence the types of strawberries you may be putting into your containers. 
There are three main uh, types of uh, strawberry plants out there and varieties are lumped into June bearing. Uh, those are the ones uh, that uh, produce a single large crop uh, in June, July, depending on your area and the state. Uh, Everbearing is a term that's been around a while. Uh, those, uh, the older varieties in particular, used to give you two small crops a year, uh, spring and fall, and then they kind of went dormant or quit flowering during the summertime, the heat of the summer. And then uh, day neutral, uh, day link neutral uh, varieties, those are actually ever bearing and those are, have been developed uh, in, in the past, past couple of decades to kind of phase out the ever bearing and they kind of make up for that sort of gap um, in the, the flowering season and they tend to flower throughout the season giving you a continuous crop of strawberries through the growing season. We'll go over uh, each of the uh, different types in a little bit of detail and why they may or may not be useful for your containers. Uh, the June bears, as I said, they produce a very large crop of uh, flowers and berries uh, at the beginning of the season. And then they start to uh, invest their energies into uh, reproducing asexually with those stolons uh, or runners and can uh, get quite aggressive uh, and fill in an open space rather quickly. They make, uh, you know, they can become a great ground cover. But when you are in containers and you have limited space, they may be too aggressive uh, and without uh, pruning those stolons off um, to, uh, you know, so that you don't overcrowd your pots. Uh, they can be used uh, in container gardens if you're using sort of larger uh, wooden raised beds or other types of containers that are, tend to have a lot a bigger surface area. They are perennial, and so sometimes they don't produce the first spring uh, when you plant them. So um, if you are looking at them as a container, realize that you may not get fruit uh, at the beginning of, uh, of your first season uh, after planting. And these are the ones where if you are a strawberry preserver, where you're wanting to make jams and jellies and such. These are the varieties that you're going to be looking for for that. So they are marginally useful in containers um, and only in the larger containers. And there are a lot of varieties to choose from. Most of your gardening centers are going to have a lot of varieties and you kind of choose the one that's going to fit your climatic zone the best because they are perennial and they are going to overwinter. Uh, ever bears, uh, again, this is an older term, uh, it's still used and a lot of uh, the varieties that are under the ever bearing uh, name are um, still out there. Uh, and as I said before, they produce two small crops, uh, one in the spring, which is a little bit bigger, and then a smaller crop in the fall. Um, because they are focusing uh, on those additional uh, berries, they produce a lot fewer runners than uh, the June bears. So they tend to uh, be a little less aggressive in filling in the empty spaces and they work fairly well with, um, with containers in that uh, situation. Uh, they can be grown as annuals or perennials. Um, and I've listed here a couple of the common varieties you'll find in um, catalogs or at your nursery centers. Uh, something to be said about all of these, uh, if you are getting them through mail order, usually they're looking, um, usually you're looking at uh, bundles of 25 bare root um, plants. So keep that in mind when you're ordering your local nursery may have potted plants, uh, you can get a lot fewer numbers. And moving on to the day link neutral varieties. And again, these are again, relatively new varieties. Uh, some of them have been around for a couple of decades but they uh, have been bred to uh, improve continuous flowering throughout the growing season. Uh, they are typically grown as annuals. Some of them are not as cold hardy as uh, the ever bears or the June bears, uh, but as container uh, plants, they may be best suited uh, for growing on your patio uh, as annuals. And I've listed some of the common varieties here. Again, uh, you can look at, um, when you're going and ordering from the catalog or your nursery center. So uh, in these, this video will be recorded, so you can go back and look at these varieties as we uh, move on here. When looking for containers, uh, it's important to, to think about the biology of those strawberries and, um, 
and select your pots or your containers for uh, the situation. Um, if you're going with round pots, you want to really go with a you know a 12 inch diameter uh, or larger uh, pot. They don't have to be super deep uh, because those shallow roots. Uh, so um, you know you don't you can make up um, you reduce the weight by not having such a deep pot. But you're going to want as, as large of a pot as you can if you're going with a round. If you're going with more of a linear rectangular container. Uh, you can, it can be fairly narrow because the strawberries are going to drape over either side if you're planting them in a single row. And it should be at least about two feet in length if you're going rectangular to get enough uh, plants to produce, um, you know, an adequate number of fruit. Uh, we all see the strawberry pots, these terracotta pots um, at, at the nursery centers and uh, the box stores. And those are good for um, creating extra surface area by having those openings uh, along the sides of the pots. Uh, so you can get more uh, plants into a pot. But just remember because you are planting at different levels uh, in the soil, uh, that it is a little more difficult to maintain even moisture uh, and nutrient uh, loads within the soil uh, so that all the plants are getting uh, the adequate amount of moisture and nutrition. So just a, a concern there that you want to make sure that you you are checking the water levels, the moisture levels of the soil in both the top and the uh, sides to make sure you're uh, not drowning one and uh, drowning the other. And here's an example of um, some planting uh, arrangements in those different types of pots. Uh, so you can see probably no more than three plants in a 12 inch round container. And you can get uh, you know more pot or more plants in a rectangular a rectangular linear um, pot than you can a round pot because they can drape off to the sides. If you crowd your strawberry plants too much, they're not going to the crowns in particular. They're not going to be able to produce more flower buds uh, when they're shaded. So um, putting more pots uh, plants in a pot is not going to give you more berries uh, and may just increase the the amount of disease you have. So uh, the strawberries do spread out quite a bit, and so you don't need to crowd them at the beginning. Uh, you know, if your cat fits in it, it's probably good to uh, put in three or uh, so uh, plants uh, for strawberries. So in the looking to, to you know, plant your uh, containers, uh, some important things you need to consider, um, you know, find a suitable location. Um, strawberries need uh, a lot of sunlight to produce flowers, uh, ergo uh, fruit. So you need at least six and preferably closer to 12 plus hours of direct sunlight for maximum production of strawberries uh, in, uh, in your containers. Uh, invest in good quality uh, potting uh, mixtures and soils. Uh, remember they are uh, a lot of times very low in nutrients unless you buy a fortified uh, potting mixture like miracle Grow, So you're gonna want to add uh, a balanced fertilizer uh, and mix it into your soils uh, in following the directions on the container of fertilizer to make sure that you're not over fertilizing and causing uh, over fertility problems uh, in your strawberries. And this is important. It's just like any planting, you don't wanna plant too deep and you don't want to plant too shallow in your, um, your strawberries. When you look at a strawberry plant, uh, the bare root in particular, you'll notice that it's, it's mostly just some dried leaves with some roots. And there's this little area of subdued stem called the crown. Um, that's where all of the uh, leaf and flower buds are arranged. And so you want that to be at the surface of your soil when you're planting them. Don't pl uh, bury that. Otherwise, you may lose uh, your, your plant or it may not produce as well. Uh, conversely, you don't want it to stick up so much that you're seeing roots uh, where that is gonna cause you some problems as well. And as you're, um, you know, as the season goes on, you're gonna want to water regularly. Uh, and this is not the uh, case of, oh no, it's wilting, I need to water it now. You need to, uh, strawberries need a good consistent moisture supply to produce well, so you're gonna at least water twice a week, more often during those hot dry spells. And ideally you're gonna water in the mornings if possible so that the plants uh, can dry off in the uh, morning sun to reduce um, disease potential. So 
Uh, as you're watering, a uh, good th rule of thumb is to stick your thumb in uh, to the first knuckle. And if it's dry to your first, uh, to the tip of your finger, that first inch, then you should be watering. Um, and as the season goes along, um, you know, nutrients are being leached out of that with our watering and also the plants are taking some up. So you're gonna to wanna to add a nitrogen containing fertilizer two or three times during the season to help maintain good vigor and um, fruit production. Um, careful, uh, use something that is designed for growing plants like a liquid emulsion or a slow release. If you use um, you know, some of the higher concentration uh, nitrogen uh, fertilizers, you can burn the plants if you're not careful. So use something that's kind of designed for a foliar or uh, time release. If you are using something like fish emulsion, remember if these are close to your windows or your house, check that fertilizer for its scent. Uh, even the deodorized ones can make it smell like a, a bait shop. Uh, if you uh, on the first couple of days after fertilizing. So check that. And as you see dead leaves or diseased fruits and uh, or heavily diseased leaves, you want to want to remove those to keep uh, the disease uh, pressure down. Uh, remember, if we're growing these as annuals, we're less worried about uh, some of the perennial diseases out there. Uh, and by just uh, clipping those diseased fruits and leaves off, you're going to help uh, keep a more vigorous uh, plant. Speaking of pests and diseases, uh, I'm just going to list a few. Uh, if you go to any uh, fact sheet, you know, they spend a lot of time talking about everything that could harm your plant. Uh, and it gets kind of scary and intimidating. These are just a few of the more common ones. And most of these are cosmetic, especially in, the, um, in an annual grown strawberry container. Uh, gray mold, which you'll see on your, you know, the tips of your strawberries, you'll see that sometimes in uh, strawberries that you purchase at the store and let sit in the fridge for too long, you'll see a little gray mold come on. Uh, leaf spot, leaf scorch, leaf blight, all of those, uh, they can be managed in roughly the same way. And that again is watering early in the morning, not overcrowding your plants and promptly removing, you know, indicated uh, diseased uh, material uh, out of the plants before uh, they have a chance to spread. And these, are, these particular diseases, I would not be too concerned about as far as um, herb, uh, fungicides or other types of chemical treatments. These can be managed culturally or uh, mechanically. And it's the same with the insects. Uh, aphids and spider mites can be a problem uh, for, for plants, especially young growing tips. The last one, spotted wing, wing dystrophil, that can be somewhat destructive, especially in the later crops of your uh, strawberries, uh, they tend to, their populations tend to build over the season and they tend to uh, cause uh, problems um, as the season goes on. And finally, uh, so when the season's over with your day neutral plants, if you're going to plant them, uh, grow those annuals, uh, you're just going to discard those plants responsibly, compost them, bury them, uh, landfill them so that you don't spread disease and clean and store those prop uh, containers appropriately. Uh, ceramic pots and clay pots, you know, do not do winter well. They will spall or crack. So clean those, dry them out, bring them into a, a, a place where they're not going to experience a lot of uh, severe cold changes. And with June bearing plants, decide if you are going to overwinter, you can just uh, use them as annuals as well. Move into an unheated garage or basement if you have a smaller container. And if it's a larger container or, or raised bed, you're gonna to wanna to mulch that tire and com container uh, with about six inches of good loose quality mulch like straw. And here are some resources um, that will be put into the chat for people to uh, look at uh, for further information on growing strawberries in containers. And I am uh, available for questions now. Thank you so much, Darren. I really appreciate that. And this photo is making me extremely hungry. So I think that is a great way to end your presentation. I also want to mention that we will be putting in the chat a link to a survey. So we'd love for you to fill out a quick evaluation survey. It doesn't take very long. Um, that link will be in the chat. Margaret also was posting all those resources that Darren showed. She posted the links to those in the chat too. So you should be able to grab them right from there. And we will get to questions. I'll try to get 
to as many as possible in the time that we have left. So I want to back up to when you were talking about containers and choosing your pots and you had mentioned some kind of diameter or the, or the length. What about the depth of the pot? How deep should it be? You don't have to go with a super deep pot. Again, these strawberries are not a very deep rooted plant and a deep pot, a lot of times the water will actually, you know, filtrate below the rooting depth of the strawberries. So it's more of surface area than depth that is important. So you can go with a fairly shallow container for strawberries uh, and uh, be secure that they'll be, they'll do well. Okay. And what about window boxes? As long as that's secure, I know with a window box, making sure it has support on the house or wherever it's attached to um, and things like that, but that would still be okay. Right. I mean, you don't need to go anything deeper than say an eight inch, uh, probably uh, pot. Just remember window boxes tend to be fairly extreme uh, climates that, you know, that if you have a brick wall or something that's absorbing a lot of sun, you may have a lot more heat stress. So you want to make sure you're, you're checking that moisture level a little bit more regularly in a window box. Okay. And another question, we had a, a several questions about varieties. So how do you go about choosing what variety to grow? Well, with June bears, it's very important that you consider um, your climatic zone because those are perennial and you're most likely going to be overwintering if you're going to get a crop. Um, as far as the other varieties, the, the ever bears and the day neutrals, you know, look at the description of them, you know, are, because they're going to talk about the sweetness and size of the berries. Because these are likely going to be grown as annuals, you're less worried about their hardiness. And so you're looking at more of those characteristics that make them good for containers and good for eating, because, you know, we want to be able to snack on them. And if you've got a, a berry that's not maybe uh, hitting your palate right, you may not want to want to go that way. But a lot of times there's great descriptions on the varieties on, on the the characteristics of the fruit. And that's a good way to determine variety for you. And okay. also what's available to you. That's always <laughs> the limiting factor a lot of the time. Yeah, definitely. Um, we kind of on this variety question, are there any varieties that maybe are less appealing to our deer and bunny friends, which I know I have in my yard, they always grab the strawberries before I get to them, um, or any that might be more resistant to certain diseases or, or problems like that. Right. So, I mean, if you're doing container gardens, hopefully the, the deer are not coming up on the patio on the deck. They might be. They will. And you could have these containers out into the garden and such. Uh, I find strawberries to be fairly resistant to browsing. Uh, it is when they, they go into fruit. I have chipmunks that come and snatch my strawberries just as they're ripe. I even had chickens break in last year. We had to fence our strawberries because our chickens found uh, them to be delicious and harvest them for us. So there's not anything I know of that's going to help uh, other than physical barriers against the critters and the berries themselves. But I've found that um, deer and rabbits don't tend to damage the plants them so much uh, with browsing. As far as disease, there are different levels of uh, disease resistance. Uh, and those are usually indicated in your mail order catalog, uh, you know, verticillium wilt, uh, uh, bacterial angular spot. You know, those are going to be listed in, as a thing. Again, if you are growing them annually, a lot of these disease problems are something that builds over time and, and sometimes generations. And uh, by growing them annually and then scrubbing and cleaning those pots really well and using new potting uh, mixture each year, you're going to minimize that disease chance anyway. Also watering properly. Sure. Uh, we had some questions about the runners. So do you have any tips for managing the runners? Is it best to cut them off right away or, um, you know, or do we, should we cut them off and, and make a new plant out of them and pot those? Um, what are, what's your advice? Well, that's, that's up to you. If you want to, if you want to keep creating containers uh, of strawberries, yeah, you can just clip them uh, and, and, and send those. Once that little daughter uh, plant has uh, developed, you can go ahead and, and uh, put that in another pot. Uh, you can clip them early um, if you don't want them to um, uh, crowd in the rest of them. But if you are using a larger raised bed or something, you may want them to uh, fill in some gaps or you may want them to be replace the, the old plant uh, because again, they're very short lived perennials. So using uh, the, the runners as a way to uh, 
fill in those gaps uh, will help you not have to purchase more uh, plants. Uh, again, the June bears are the ones that produce the most aggressive amount of runners. They can produce upwards of a hundred a season. So uh, going to the June or the, the ever bears or the day neutral because they are focusing primarily on flower and fruit production, they tend to put out a lot fewer runners uh, in general. Okay. Um, we had some questions about transplanting. Can we transplant existing strawberry plants that maybe are in the garden to a container um, or should we just start over and purchase new plants? That is up to you. <clears throat> if those plants are healthy, I would say, yes, yeah, sure, go ahead and do that. But if you've had incidents of disease, all you're going to do is be spreading the disease uh, on the soil that they're, that's on those roots or on those plants themselves. So it's entirely up to you on that, uh, the comfort level there. But if, you, if it's a fairly clean planting, sure, there's no problem there. Again, it's going to depend on the June versus Everbearer and, and what kind of pots uh, and containers you have. Okay. Uh, we had some questions, Darren, about fertilizer. So I know you mentioned nitrogen fertilizer. So there was a question about why not using a balanced fertilizer. Um, some questions about maybe what fertilizer you recommend and, and the timing of when. Sure. Usually we tell people to get a soil test uh, for their in-ground plantings and such with containers. Sometimes that's not, you know, economical or easy. Uh, but if you're starting with a sterile potting mix, uh, they don't have a lot of nutrients. And I do recommend that you use a balanced fertilizer as an establishment fertilizer. And you're going to mix that into the soil. And that's going to be something like a 10, 10, 10 or a 14, 14, 14. And again, follow the directions on the, the amount. The nitrogen containing one is, is sort of adding in um, throughout the season to promote uh, continued foliage growth. Um, it should still have some, uh, you know, phosphorus and potassium, the N, the P and the K in there, but uh, it should have a little more nitrogen, but not a lot. Again, we don't want a lot of foliage. We want to continue the flower uh, uh, buds to uh, being formed. Okay. And there was some questions here. Should we start from seeds or should we get plants or, uh, you know, how should we get started? I would recommend through plants, uh, either bare root or potted plants. Seeds, you're going to remember, uh, won't, uh, because if they're, they're produced sexually, they will not necessarily breed true to uh, the plants uh, that you started with. Um, and especially if you're getting, you know, strawberries in the um, supermarket, those plants are designed uh for production and commercial use, those plants. And so they don't necessarily translate well to uh, growing in a container for the home gardener. Okay. And then when should we plant? There was a question, when should we plant for the June bearing? Should we plant those this spring out in April or May? And then I know I saw another question about, can strawberries be planted in the fall? Yeah, um, you can plant uh, the June bears in the fall if you like. Um, but you definitely can plant this year. Uh, again, you may not have a, a, a spring crop on your June bears. In fact, it's a good idea to pinch those first flower buds. Um, you can plant, you know, right around just before the end of frost. Strawberries are pretty hardy and you can always, they're low growing. So you can go out there and cover them a couple of times if you need to. Uh, you don't need to wait until after Memorial Day or something. You can, you can get those, uh, you know, in May or late April, depending on where you're at in the state. Okay. And can you cover mulching again quickly? Um, I know we've got about a minute left here. I know there were some questions about mulching outdoor plants uh, or the container plants or using pine needles for mulch, if that would be acceptable. Yeah. What do you recommend? Pine, pine needles, leaves are the ones that are going to be the most problematic for mulching because they mat and, and that causes a problem for those low growing plants like strawberries. You want to, if you're going to keep the container outside because you want to protect the roots, you want to mulch the entire container, not just the plants themselves. And so creating a chicken wire cage around the container, uh, that's going to give you at least six inches of mulch material all the way around is the best way to mulch those uh, containers. Again, avoid terracotta and clay uh, or ceramic pots because they tend to spall and break. But if you've got wood or plastic or metal, then go ahead and create that. Pine, pine needles work fine. Um, straw works fine. Those are loose. They have a lot of air uh, pockets in them. They don't mat down as well. And so those make great uh, mulch materials. And they're also usually free of weed uh, seeds. 
Great. Thank you so much, Darren, for sharing with us about how to grow strawberries in containers. Uh, we're going to post in the chat one more time a link to an evaluation survey and uh, check the website for the recording of this webinar, as well as the previous webinars we did. And we'll have some more coming up in May. So thank you, everybody.